Hello everyone. I'm Liz. Uh, welcome back. And I am eh, all about being a maker. Just a reminder to anyone or someone new. And I do knitting, crochet, felting, spinning, sewing, quilting, embroidery, drawing, and whatever else I decide to, you know, try out, uh, make just because I like to do that. All right, so we're just gonna hop right in. So I'm gonna talk about finished objects. Uh, last week I said I would talk to you more about um, patterns by Lolly Lala. You'll be seeing her strung through here a lot. So uh, I enjoy her pattern, so she has many, so. We're going to start out here with Dragon Dirt. Here he is. And here's Dragon Dirk. I'll give him a little turn around, like a little fashion show here. Can you see the sparkles in there? We'll talk about that in a minute. So here's Dragon Dirk. All right. So that's by Lolly Lala who is Lydia Tresselt. So you can find her on Facebook. You can get her patterns. I did find them on Ravelry. Can't remember, I didn't try to look them up on Etsy, so I don't remember that. Um, he's made with number 10 cotton thread and number eight still crochet hook. Referring to my notes here. Um, Okay, so I made two modifications on him. So for the most part, I followed her pattern for the body and all the parts as pattern was written. I just always use number 10 cotton thread because I like the materials that it makes. So I think she uses slightly bigger, she uses different yarn. I don't know what it is because I don't follow that. I just use number 10 cotton threads. So I believe hers are bigger. Um, let's see, I, I never thought to do this though. But thanks to you guys, I'm starting to recall that maybe this is something that should happen is, how big is something? I'll see, Dirk is all, not quite nine inches. Eight and three fourths inches. All right. So, modifications. The scarf that's in the pattern is not this scarf. I got some random bug that told me that he's a dragon. I wanted something with scales. So, if you look here, this is called the crocodile stitch. If you ever want to make it, you just look up crochet crocodile stitch and you can probably find many tutorials. I just found a tutorial. Don't remember which one I use, but just go find you. Find yourself one. Then the other modification is all of Dirk's scales. I decided I wanted him to have scales. Her pattern does not have scales. All I did is made these. I just made individual ones. And I used number 10 cotton threads on this too. And I added a, um, a thin metallic thread. So this, in this case, it's silver. And made each individual thread. And then I used a dainty white thread to border them is not number 10. It is little teeny tiny thread. I don't know if you can see it'll focus on this. By the way, here's my experimental thread where I, one where I used something else and didn't like how it looked, but I used it anyway. Then I changed over the silver. 
it's like rainbow fish where he has one different scale. So, and then I individually sewed them on in layers and staggering them because scales don't just go in straight rows. They go staggered like bricks. And then I did some for the top of his head. And that is my modifications for Dirk the Dragon. I would definitely do him again. And I wanted to do him in kind of a dark green and the scales in like a burgundy red. I'm not sure if I put shine in or not, but thinking about it. Um, just something in the future maybe I'll do, but for now I've made one. So made Dirk, happy with him. There he is. Now I sewed down his hat. Um, if you really wanted the hat to come on and off, you could probably do that, but I sewed down the hat. Um, because I wanted to. All right, that's Dirk. So done with finish object Dirk. So, and then next finished object, I'm gonna tell you, I'm a little later recording because I finished this finished object probably an hour ago. I couldn't get it done last night, I was too tired. All right, it's the socks. Check it out, guys. My second color work turned out really good. Okay, I'm gonna get close. Hey, it looks even better on video. Um, my first color work you'd see in my episode one it, from Max, Max, Maxim Seer. Uh, it had a lot of wrinkling in it, which. I'm fine with. But this one, no wrinkling. Check it out. Here's the back. And this is um, just two, two color, color work. And the one for Max's was upwards of four. That might have been the difference in my tension and wrinkling. I don't know. I haven't done enough color work to decide. And by the way, off note. If you're like, my goodness, this girl's glasses are crooked as heck. They are, in fact, crooked as heck, and they are bent very badly. Um, when I fell down and injured my arm, I also smushed my glasses and have not afforded to get a new pair. So you'll just have to live with my crooked glasses until someday. All right, back to this. I'm so happy. Okay, so here's it from a side angle. So this is the side. So the patterning and stuff that I... So remember that the maple leaf came from the book, um, what is it? Knitting, Knitting Ovation Stitch, Stitch, Stitch Dictionary. The maple leaf did. And then I added all this in between so I didn't have like floats. Look, so if I hadn't added this stuff, the floats would have been that long. I was like, I don't think I want floats that long on my second color work. Okay. All right. So, and then I did, okay. So we're just going to start from toe up to top. Let me get the notes on it. So here is my stitch chart. Just ignore this. This is just a... I don't know what that was. Scribble dee dibble. Okay. And so then I wrote my notes on the side. It's basically the same as I have a notes I have written out for my basic sock. So I just take that and I modify it for when I do different things. In this case, color work was my different thing. So I cast on 14 stitches for the toe. I increased every other row until it was 64 stitches. That's 19 rows. So 19 rows of toe. 
Then I knit 72 rows or until seven and a half inches on the foot. So here to here, 72 uh, rows. And then on the heel, I did the, a wrap, uh, the wrap heel. I mean, that's all I can explain. I've only been knitting for seven years. I'm not like a professional knitter. Um, so you'll have to find the heel that you like. This is the heel that I liked and I understand. Um, and then I add in, so after I get the heel done and adding all the stitches back in, I always add five stitches right here on each side. Okay. So that might be easier to see in the one I have turned sideways. Okay. So I always add that five stitches right here on each side. So that is so I have this sock down. So I don't own sock blockers. I have not made them yet. I plan on making some in my future, but I have so many things to do that hasn't been important. And I never block my socks. I just wear them, wash them, wear them. I don't put in that extra. So the reason I add in that five stitches is so that I have, let me just use myself here. I have the extra space from my heel to the top of my foot here because sometimes if you don't add it in it can be really tight over the top of your foot right here because it's drawn in so I give that and then I spend the next mm, is it 10 rounds yeah 10 rounds decreasing so you can see my little I have a little decrease here so the next 10 rounds I decrease, matching on both sides. There it is. Decreasing until I'm back to my 64 stitches. And in this case, after I did my 10 stitches, I still did three more. I still did three more rounds of the main color because I didn't want to start my color work like down here. So I just added in three more. Then the color work itself was 31 rows to end the color, to do the, the color work pattern. Okay. Then I got up here and I did two more rounds in just red. I didn't start the ribbing yet. I just did two more rounds in red. And then I did 12 rows of two by two ribbing. Now, if I'm not doing anything up here, a lot of times I'll just start my ribbing here and just do the whole cuff ribbing. Um, but in this case, I didn't. So, and then I bound off. And I know a lot of people, they're like, oh, I don't like the look of this or whatever. This doesn't bother me because you cannot tell or even see. Once it's on your foot, you can't see that. It's not even visible. So, not a worry for me. It's a worry for you. You do you and figure out what you need to do your stuff. Okay. This is the yarn, and then I'll tell you what I do different. Baton's Croy, just a reminder. Baton's Croy, I think I have that one upside down. Sock yarn, and it is. 75% wool, 25% nylon. This color was flax. And this color was, I believe it's just red. Let me find it. Yeah, red. So flax and red. Those are the colors I use for these socks. All right. So what would I do different? So I can get these on my feet. I can just get them over my heel with a little more effort and I can just get them off my feet over my heel with a little more effort. But it wasn't so bad like I couldn't get it on. I can get it on and then once it's on 
if they fit great. So what I think I would do next time I do color work on a saw cup is I think adding in two more stitches. So instead of 64 stitches, 66 on the cuff. And if I need to, I can decrease by two by the time I get to the cuff on the top and have the cuff be 64. So it might be a little bit of experimentation with that so that I don't have a big struggle putting them over my heel. But these will be fine. I will wear them. Super happy. But And I did have a lifeline for the whole time down here before I went into the um, uh, color work just in case I needed to pull them out okay that's done with that so those were my finished objects now I have a finished object slash work in progress okay spinning last week I told you I started spinning this and I had some singles so here is my BFL I think Either way, it's wool. Um, uh, two ply. And I'm not sure. I haven't decided. Um, I think I would put this at a slightly thicker fingering weight. If I were to decide, like what size of the yarn it so I'm going with slightly bigger fingering weight is my determination um so I got three 60 they were between 60 gram and 65 grams so they were I, I actually was pretty consistent with the size of the the skeins or Hanks sorry I do know the difference my brain just doesn't work correctly okay Gains, Hanks. Um, either way, yarn. Um, I still have some of the fiber to spin. I'm going to be trying to do that over the next couple days because I really want to get that finished. Because I have, I always have lots of other things I want to work on. So that is finished object slash work in progress. So finished on those but works in progress I still have some fiber that goes along with that to spin the next thing is I would like to make a correction for my last video um, I said black face black face luster I meant blue face luster BFL my brain I have dyslexia and so sometimes what I say out loud and what I'm actually thinking do not line up I've always been this way. I do not know why. It is very frustrating. So if it's frustrating to you, believe me, it's frustrating to me too. So if you ever need me to clarify anything, because I have said something that you're like, what? <laughs> I say some things and I go back and I think, I think the same thing. What? Um, so I find myself correcting myself so and then also I <laughs> I referred to my first color work which is by Maxim Sear and I said Maximus I know someone named Maximus so therefore I did a little over of things so it's it's Maxim Sear not Maximus okay so, if you ever need clarifications, just put it in the comments and I'll try to clarify. If you're just putting it in there to make some snide remark and be mean, I'll try to delete your comment. Um, I can't help that I was born with dyslexia. I have several family members with it, so it is what it is. Um, whips. I'm still working on my blanket. Please, he's here. I'm still making progress on that. Um, he is, oh my gosh, let's see. I'm not going to pick it up. I'm not going to show you. It'll just be a surprise later. But I want to tell you in inches. 
Let's see. Good um, thing I always have a ruler on me. I have made 20, I'm 21 and a half inches. It doesn't sound like a lot, but I'm getting to almost two feet of blanket. Considering I've started over on an oversized queen, I'm, I'm good with it. Okay. That's my work in progress. Not gonna think about that too much. Things I want to do. I always have things I want to do. So I want to finish the BFL spin. BFL question wool. <laughs> uh, start the start the sewing monster project I talked about a couple episodes ago. Um, Sorry, I'm reading my notes so I don't forget to tell you. Because my sewing bulb, my sewing bulb, I can't believe this is what's holding me up on some things. So my little tiny sewing bulb from my burnt out bulb on my sewing machine has come in. So here was the hold up. Um, so I can actually see, because this house is an old house so it doesn't have overhead lightings, it just has like a side lamp. And side light for when you're sewing, it doesn't work real well. So it's great to have your sewing bulb. So I will be installing that and hopefully working on that soon. I want to work on it now, but I can't. Um, so hopefully that goes okay. It's an experiment, so we'll see. It could just be this weird, derpy thing. You know, your first one, the derpy, weird thing. Or it could turn out as cool as I have in my brain. Not everything I have in my head comes out great outside of my head. So, and I have some patterns. I'm excited about this. I have patterns that I purchased on Etsy. They were really cheap. Like a dollar, dollar something each pattern. And it had more than one in it. So it's for Christmas ornaments, crochet covers. Um, my grandmother, who has passed away, she had made them, and I have I have them here. They're hanging now. They're beautiful. I think the that lace over the top of the ornaments just look fantastic. It's just really nice. So I've been inspired. But when she passed away, I pretty much am the only one in the family that crochets. And she they, they, she inherited me her pattern. But I think some of her elderly friends got some of the patterns too, which I'm, I'm fine with. So I couldn't, I never found her Christmas ornament pattern. So I think maybe one of the little elderly ladies that she knew got, got the Christmas ornament pattern because I never found that. So I went on the hunt for kind of vintage patterns. So I found some on Etsy. So if you ever need any, go check out there and see what you can find. I want to do, so I want to do a bunch of those and I don't care. I know Christmas is on the 26th, which is Monday. So we got what? Three days. Yeah. Three days. I don't care if I get them done. I don't care if I'm working on Christmas ornament covers in July. I, I'm not, not specific, I'm not, don't care. Socks for my kid. And he's just, I just do vanilla socks for, for him. And I lied last week. I didn't know I lied, but I lied. I said he had two pairs of socks. And then I was wearing a pair of Peyton's socks that had like red, blue, red and blue and a striping that looks a little like this lighter color, lighter than this. And I have a pair of socks that more like, I just was thinking, I know I made another pair of socks with that, but not for me. So I went up and dug around in his drawer and he's sitting on his bed and I dug around in his drawer and I found them and I pulled them out. And he's so sweet. He immediately ripped off his socks <laughs> and made me put, 
put the socks I made him on his feet. He just, he is just a love. Um, if you were a knitter or maker or anything, you need someone like my kid out of your life because everything I make him, he likes. Yep. <laughs> he likes it. He likes that mom makes him things and stuff. So um, that just brings me joy because he is like, I can knit some stuff for my daughter, but she doesn't have the same appreciation that, that he has. So I hope you have someone like him in your life somewhere that you give them something and they're like, yeah. <laughs> so he is like the most maker worthy person I know. Um, so because it's Christmas, so, um, let's see, Christmas Eve is on Sunday and Monday is Christmas day. So it's basically the Christmas weekend. I also work. Um, so I don't know. I'll be happy if I can get work done on this blanket, this spinning done. And anything of what I just said I want to do started. Even remote, like if I cut it out or I set it up, great. Okay, then we're going to move into things I purchased. Now this isn't going to be something that happens all the time. It's not like I'm a money spending, throw my money all over the place. Uh, that's not how I roll. Not usually. Mostly because I don't have money. <clears throat> but I talked to you about, I ordered things because my daughter needs her stuff and I need my stuff here. And we don't live in even remotely the same town. So. Um, let's talk about, so the Christmas bulbs. I know this is not. A materials thing but it kind of is because I'm going to do the Christmas ornament covers and I need the things to do that with so I went thrift storing and I like to find also the old glass ornaments like made in the USA shiny brights things like that I I don't even care if they're a little scratched up I'd rather them be a little scratched up and they're quality than they're made in the USA like even if it older than me, me, I don't care, um, versus the Chinese made stuff that's coming out now. And that's just the way I am. So first I'm going to show you the bulbs that I'm not going to modify just because it's part of the lot I bought. I bought several bags. So I separated out the ones that I'm not doing anything with. So these are all like the old shiny brights ornaments and I even found a little shaped one he's cute I know these aren't everybody's things but my husband like he's like they don't like them yeah, whatever <laughs> but I have to show you these two in particular because I like to imagine that somebody's grandma made these and she just like gave them away to the thrift store. <laughs> so these are older ornaments, but look at the tatting. I know it's tatting. I didn't tat. I wish I did. Oh, let's get it to stop wiggling. There's that one. This one doesn't have a hook. Look at that one. Aren't they adorable? Look at the thread on that. That has to be number 20 or 30. I don't know. So the larger the number, the smaller the threads. Anyway, so those are the, there's a lot of shiny brights in here. That's the brand, by the way. All right. So on to the ones that I got in the bags with the shiny brights that I'm like, hmm. So these all just are stamped made in the U.S. And I'm sorry for the reflection, but I'm not pulling all these out. So I got some blue ones. 
the green ones and you can see these are a bit bigger I don't usually come across them quite this size but it would be nice to have some different sizes so there's those um, I can make covers for those and they were all in different bags so I mean when you're talking 55 cents and a quarter so there's more of those those are all stamped made in the US and then this bag had a lot more in it but I picked out all the things I'm not keeping and I'm redonating them back because why not so these are all order older there's silvers a little purple one there's some small ones I don't know if I can make I might have to really modify the pattern to make the ones for the tiny ones so these are the these are what I would consider like normal size Christmas balls and I'm gonna, so we'll see what I make get to make covers for so I bought all those so I have options for making the covers and then I got a nitty naughty so my daughter can when she comes up for this weekend for Christmas um, she can take her nitty naughty with her now this one makes these these shorter guys he I think this is a nine inch pretty sure it's nine inch so this makes these shorter guys which I'm okay with we'll see I don't know if this will make a difference when I have more fibers I've been spinning probably a little less time than I've been knitting. I can pinpoint I started knitting seven years ago, a hair over seven years ago. First thing I made was a sock with acrylic yarn because with horrible void, they were really bad. Circular needles and that was the first thing I made and I have a picture of it so I know exactly when I started knitting and then this is Cheyenne's knitting body sorry I didn't mean to say my daughter but you can't find me <laughs> size difference so this one makes the skeins or the hanks longer By quite a bit so we'll decide I'll decide if that's adequate at some point I I'll figure it out and then my swift came in um, so sorry I had a lock it's gonna make me so yeah so I'll be able to actually, you know, work up my hair. I'll actually be able to do the hanks of yarn into and wind them into balls. So I'll be I'm excited about that. I have not used it yet. Let me punch it down. Have not used it yet. I purchased this guy off of Etsy. I purchased the Knitting Naughty off of Etsy. Yes. And then I got, I told you I was getting these things. Some Snyder Spindles off of Etsy. I got a little um, a little spindle. I've been wanting to try one of these for quite some time. And by the way, I've been practicing like this thing once you get get really just easy go easy flow so got one of those then I told you I was getting bobbins for my double my double treadle see they have this on them that you put the the band into so that came from the woolery woolery it was packed with care by someone named Matt. <laughs> so thank you, Matt. 
makes me happy. And then I got a Shagu um, cable because I wanted to try. People keep talking about them and they are the what my brain just went dead they're the spin they, they have a spin in the cable but the cable is not the same as their other cable so this is an experiment for me so this is a see if I I like it I'm not gonna go crazy and buy a bunch if I've never even tried it so the next time I make socks. These are 22 inches. The next time I make socks, I believe, I will try these. Watch your socks are pretty big. And I might get a cable to be wrong, but, um, yeah, because I don't like when I see the tip pour boiling water over the cables to straighten as needed. I don't have to do that with the normal shagus, so. All right. So there's that, and oh, and then I got the other, the spindle came in, like Christmas spindles. Uh, so here is the drop spindle. This is an Amazon purchase. I said before I got them off of Amazon and they're like about 30, I'm going to say 36. I don't know exactly, but I'm going to say 36. And stuff. So, all right. And then I'm going to leave you with, that was it. I'm going to leave you with um, podcasters I like to watch. So we got Andre, Andrea Mallory, Knitting Mustache, The Knit Girls with three L's, Simply in Stitches, and those are the ones I like um, like to watch. The Knit Girls, just a note, they do um, SSK, and it's not something that's even close to me or something I would go to because too far away, uh, that's, I, I don't know that I'm interested in going to anything like super far away. All right, so, and also on a side note, my bathroom is finally being fixed. So that's why some of this might not get done too because we need to do flooring. Like my husband has fixed the flooring. Somebody did a bad job in the bathroom, caused a leak, rotted the floor. He ripped it out. It was crusty and holes and it's been like that for a long time because money and so we saved up enough to be able to deck the floor and now we need to go hopefully today look for a new sink hopefully a pedestal sink and um, what we want to put down on the flooring it has to be something that can get wet because my family is always getting things wet and then it needs to be non-skid so no one falls down in the bathroom and breaks things themselves mainly so all right i will talk to you next week and if you celebrate christmas have a merry christmas if you don't have a great weekend